so guys uh, we are going to um, have this uh, service of training so let's first start with your background so that it will become easy for me to know as in whether you are from the technical or how, how should i start this particular training so can each one of you brief me around uh, around your profile what is your currently working on or what is your understanding on the service not to Hello. Let's start with Balaji. Are you there, Balaji? Hello. Balaji, are you there? Anyone else? Kavya, Kuldeep, anyone? Oh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, good morning. Uh, yeah, so just brief you about myself. Uh, I'm new to service now. Uh, I have been working in uh, IT service management for the past six years as a BMC remedy developer. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I have worked on BMC AR platform uh, across various versions like 7.6. I'm currently working on the latest version 9.1. Uh, so service now is a new uh, platform which I would like to learn. Uh, however, I'm aware of the ITL concepts. I'm uh, uh, ITL certified mm -hmm. and I'm BMC yeah. administration certified. Okay. So you know yeah. all this kind of remedy like uh, workflows and all those concepts you have clarity on? Yes, yes, yes. I'm uh, aware of all the <coughs> workflows concepts. Um, like BMC okay. perspective, I'm aware. So in service now, I'd like to see. Yeah. So I've worked on various yeah. modules. I've worked across various modules also, like uh, the ITS modules, SRM, request management, the CMDB, the SLM. Okay. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, Rekha, shall we start with you? Actually, uh, hi. Good morning. This is Rekha, and I'm I'm very new to this uh, service now training. So, yeah, let's get started. So, are you from technical background, or or what is your background? Yeah, I'm from technical background, but uh, this uh, type of uh, uh, language I didn't study ever. Oh, okay. No, thank you. Okay, uh, others guys, I'm muting you people. So, unmute yourself only when you have queries. Okay. Anyone else? Sai, Praka, Pavan, Rakesh, Balaji, Kavya. Anyone of you? Can you please brief me around? Hi, uh, this is Rakesh here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been working as a front-end developer from past two years. Uh, so based on the technologies like HTML5, CSS3, and uh, JavaScript technologies, basically AngularJS. So I'm kind of new to uh, service now as well. So. Okay. Uh, Balaji, are you there? Anyone else? Hi, this is Pawan. Uh -huh. um, Hello, Pawan. I have 10 years, 10 years of experience in Java, JTE. Um, uh -huh. Currently, I'm working in production support. Um, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hi. I'm Kavya. Hi, Kavya. I just completed my data now. I don't have any knowledge. So, do you know any, any scripting language, maybe Java or something, which you would have learned in your BTEC? I just know basics now. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, then let's let's start with service now. Let's start the background of it as in how it works and stuff like that. Uh, so let me open the slide and let's go through. Okay, so let's first try to understand the overview as in from a layman language. If I talk about what is service now, let's first understand that. I know it will be repetitive for some of the students because yes, you are from the IT background, but compared to other students, I'll start from scratch. Okay. So what is service now? So think about a situation that today you join any company, any organization, and you start working for them. So once you start working over there, what, what will be required? The company will have to have 
a platform over which let's say today you join the company so you will be uh, requiring a laptop or let's say even if you are the employee of the company maybe you you need a new software to be installed on your laptop or let's say for the testing purpose you need a blackberry phone because some scripting was written on the blackberry phone to do the testing or maybe you need any server access any printer access so means in short i can say that okay once you are working in the organization whatever organization whatever type of the organization it may be you may require a different type of service accesses for different type of request for the day to day working whatever your organization perspective working is there you may require these step for your day to day working so in those kind of scenarios what you will do in those kind of scenarios you will be making use of a ticketing tool so that is a layman language that is a ticketing tool will be used by organization to raise a ticket of a kind the ticket can be if you want something new that is if you want you know a new service offering and the ticket can also be of a kind let's say today i have a laptop with me and tomorrow it is not working for me so if something is not working as desired for you again you will be raising what again you will be raising tickets to get your issue resolved whatever kind of issue you are getting let's say suppose my laptop has crashed completely so obviously i'll need this one to be resolved whatsoever is the case in the organization aspect so means i can say a ticket can be of multiple kind it can be a request for something new it can be a incident or but always called incident if something is broken with the application which will be, you will be using for raising ticket will be called what the application which you will be using for raising a ticket will be called incident because something is broken so these are two of the application yeah it is not limited to only to two there are multiple other applications also but yeah, i would start with these two saying that these two are the base application for which you will be using any ticketing tool in the market. Beat service now, beat any any other tool in the market. Now, let's see what it says over here. So that's what it is saying over here. It is saying service now is what it is a software platform that supports IT service management and it automates the common business process. So what is the common business process? Obviously, the day to day working of an organization. Like if someone joins the organization, they need something, or if if someone is going to work on something new, again they need some 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 kind of software, some kind of hardware. so all those services all those process was obviously there in the company before and also just using the service now tool you are automating that particular request process obviously any company when it was working it would have have the service request option it would have like let's see if if i take the example of day one scenarios in a company obviously the company would have the it support desk or the respective support desk who ever was the responsible team to provide whatever services the employees of the organization is looking for For example, let's say in my company, if I take the example, just now they have started with service. Now, so initially what they were doing is they were doing it manual through manual process. So, if a small scale company set up service, they first they will do what? First they will be having IT support desk, and it will be done on a normal piece of paper work or something like that. Just to automate that, what the company is doing, company is moving toward any of the ticketing tools so that now they have a track of everything in a tool rather than relying it on a piece of paper or a file or whatever. Okay? Does that make sense, guys? What is a ticketing tool? Guys, anyone any query? I'll take it as a no. Okay. What next it says? It says that it is based on a software as a service, which automates the common business process and contains number of modular applications, as well as it can vary by instance and user. Okay. So now let's break this line into multiple line and let's see one by one. So the first thing first written in this line is that it is based on what it contains number of applications. Just now I talked about that and number of applications are there. Just now I told you some of it. Obviously I told you the request and the incident. So obviously other application going ahead. We will be seeing. We will be elaborating elaborating those. But yeah, for now you can understand that okay. It has got a number of applications. Detail we are not covering for now. And next, what it says, it is based on software as a service platform. So, if you can remember, one of you people told me that you are from the remedy background. And for others to know, remedy is one of the competitor of service. Now, it was, it has a similar kind of concept. It is also taking to in the market. Over there, also using remedy, also people create what you using remedy. Also, the organization is uses the remedy to create tickets of whatever kind it is. They use incidents and all logic over there in remedy. Then why service now? Why service now gaining popularity? Why are people moving towards service now? We obviously we need to understand that. because as I told, remedy is there in the market. Then HP service manager is there in the market. Then your uh, IBM Tivoli is there in the market. So why service? Now? 
Savitri is gaining its popularity because of the feature written over here that is SAS. What is SAS? Let's try to understand that. So SAS stands for Software as a Service. What is Software as a Service? Now the question arises. So for you to know now, now in the basic term, I can say that let's say today I go to purchase a tool in the market. Whatever ticketing tool it is, I'm going to purchase a tool in the market from whatever perspective it is. There can be two ways you can, if you can purchase a tool. Be it a ticketing tool, be it of any kind. You can purchase it in two ways. One is called platform as a service. So when you purchase a tool as a platform as a service, what does it mean? When you purchase a particular tool as a platform as a service, means you are purchasing the entire platform of the tool. When I say entire platform means what? Means the entire platform you're using. Now, the baseline of the tool, once the company purchases the platform of, its, of the tool, means now your company is responsible for maintaining the tool, upgrading the tool, or let's say today the tool size, uh, space size was supposed, supposed to be. So tomorrow when the uh, uh, database expansion has to be required, your company is responsible. If something goes wrong in the server of the tool, again your company is responsible for maintaining stuff like this. But if your tool is based on the software as a service, means you're saying that, okay, I am purchasing the tool, only the software part of it. I'm not considering, I'm not working, I'm not going to fix any such issues on the server side of the database. Like who is going to be responsible? The tool owner is going to be responsible for maintaining the tool. So software as a service means you're using just the software of the tool. For example, to make you understand that, for example, when you use Facebook, what do you use? So over there, you just create your user account and you start using the tool, correct? You, you don't care about how the database is maintained for it or how the server is maintained for it, who is doing the upgrade process if and when required, because it is not your responsibility. It is the owner responsibility. Whosoever is a tool owner, they are responsible for maintaining the tool, upgrading the tool or whatsoever is the case. So means when I'm using software as a service, means the overhead on my team reduces. Why it reduces? Because all these responsibility doesn't lie in my company. My company only has to purchase the tool and they have to use the software of the tool, whatsoever the software. It is whatsoever or applications or modules it is providing, we are just using it. The maintaining, the upgrading, all these are not in my scope. So I'll not have to have you know resources with multiple domain expertise. For example, if I take explicit example of service one, service one says that okay. For the company to use service now, let's say today my company goes, I say that okay, I'll use service now from today onwards. The company will not have to hire the people knowing database. The company will not have to hire the people knowing your let's say SQL command or Unix command and stuff like that. How will the company will take care of those? Because the service now company says that okay, if you want to use the service now tool, you just need to hire developers like us, the people who know service now level scripts. The background of the service now, be it the database, be it the server and all those upgrade process and enhancement process or whatever it is, it is anyway not there in your scope. Anyway, you are not responsible for maintaining or upgrading the tool. Anyway, it is in scope of what? Anyway, it is in scope of the service now parent company. So obviously, my team initially, my team used to, will have to hire the expert people knowing what? My team will have to hire the expert people knowing your let's say unix let's say uh, for example sq but now they are they, they that is not required that is not a prerequisite anymore because as i told because service now says that okay those things are anyway in the in scope of service of parent company so that's why at any point in time if a abc company is using service now you don't have access even if you want as a developer to have the access to the database you don't have access it is always in scope of service of so that is called software. Now, another line says that it contains multiple instances. What is instance? For that, let me show you the URL. So service by URL looks something like this. How and what it is, everything we'll elaborate further later on. But for now to understand, you can understand that, okay, whenever a company is going for purchasing service, now service now says that, okay, minimum of three different URLs, I'll give it to your company. Why minimum of three different URLs? Because the concept says that, okay, if you have three different URLs, then three different designated people can work on it. What does it mean? Let's try to elaborate it further. So many a time, what will be there? Many a time, from your organization perspective, there will be a different set of people who have to enhance the service or tool, 
called developers like us they will be another let's say if i'm the developer suppose i did my development work so now we need the testing team a, a team of people who will do the testing to see whatever enhancement or whatever scripting i have done whether it is working fine or not means we need testers over there what can be the next one the next one can be the production or the go live url where actually the customers will be raising their tickets or concerns or whatsoever it is means overall i can say that any organization will have three different URLs so that the work of team A doesn't clash with team B and the work of team B doesn't clash with team C so on and so forth. So that's why the first URL will be called dev URL, development URL, where developers like us, if you get any request, let's say tomorrow you get a request that okay, enhance something or design something or whatsoever is the case. So developers like us, we will do our design work, we'll do our development work in the dev URL. Because obviously, if you do the if you do the work in the same URL as the end users or the customers are using, if suppose I have I am debugging some code, so this debugger will impact the customers also. So that's why it is better that we give you a designated URL where the dev people can do their development work. What is next? So once the development people are done with their work, again the another URL designated URL will be there, which will be used by the testing team to test their data. So now you as a developer, what you will have to do is once your dev work is done, you will have to move the code, whatever code you design in the development instance or the development URL, you will move it to the next instance, that is next URL called test instance. And then once that is also testing, well, test it, the testing team gives you the sign off, then you will move forward it to the go live or the production instance. So every uh, team, every uh, organizational unit will have minimum of three different instances whenever they sign the contract with service. They can be more than three, but a minimum of three will be there as I told, one for development activity, one for testing activity, and one for the production of the goal activity. Guys, anyone, any queries so far? Uh, no, we are good. So because these three URL belong to the same organization, so that's why we also refer these three URL by the name dev instance, test instance, or the production instance. Because the overall structure, obviously, because the three belongs to the same organization, so the overall structure of the three URLs will be same, same only at any point in time. Okay, so now let's move further. Let's see the next concept over here. So this is about the SAS and the multiple instances. Okay. So now let's move forward. What is the next thing it says? So it elaborates over here what is SaaS. Already we know what is SaaS. SaaS stands for software as a service. And as I told in the SaaS, the parent company, the, uh, the tool parent company is responsible for maintaining or upgrading the tool. So that's why it says that how will you access the data? How will you access the data when you're using the SaaS platform? So it says in the SaaS, the data is accessed remotely through a web-based interface, like, like your Facebook as I took the example, that you just type the URL over there, you don't bother about how the database and how the server is going to get upgraded or whatsoever it is. So you are accessing the database through a web-based interface. And where is the data stored? Obviously the data is stored in the database and it is uh, where it is, it is using that the software is centrally hosted. And in the case of service, now the software is centrally hosted in the cloud. Okay, so how do we inter uh, access the database through a web-based interface? We access the instance. Now, what is the history of the tool? When what was it found? So it says, ServiceNow was found way back in 2003 by a guy called Fred Luddy. And this guy was initially working for Remedy Corporation. And ServiceNow is based on what? ServiceNow is based on the ITIL standards. And its main headquarters is in California. So now let's try to understand this one as well. So now what is idle standard? Let's first understand that. So idle full form is, let's go to the next slide. Idle full form is information, technology, infrastructure, library. What it is. So idle is a framework which helps any tool developer to enhance their visibility for designing a tool. So that's in a label language I'm talking about. For example, let's say tomorrow. I give you a requirement to design any ticketing tool. As in, not only ticketing tool, let's say I give you a requirement to design maybe a library management. So if you get any requirement, how you design, how you do your work, obviously you work on designing the 
platform of it as in suppose i get a work today so my my role my assumption will be that okay in my tool whatever i'm designing i'll have to have a field storing the user's name the person who is allocating the book and i'll design a field storing what i'll design a particular field storing the book's name so this relationship i want to store before i'm designing a library manager but i can say that okay if you are designing any tool based on the it framework don't only think about the technical aspect of it think about n number of other aspects associated internally what are those aspects maybe the aspects may be like don't only think about technical but also think about how much demand your tool will get so if already there are tools better than you with more functionality with more enhancements why will anyone move toward your tool what is the demand of it how will you get it popularity second one is what is the capacity of your tool so let's say today if you are designing the tool and if you test for five with five five people logging at the same time it may be okay but in a real time scenario let's say i sold my tool and i sold it to a library where let's say 10000 people are there so will my tool be able to take care of that much load of 10000 people logging at the same time so means overall i can say that okay your tool should be capable enough of holding too much load if anything goes wrong in the tool people should be able to you know log in at the same time it should not crash again at the same time suppose a server a crashes have you taken the backup of the server in in any other location or in any other uh, zone or whatsoever it is so <clears throat> i did also advise you that because your data is critical to you in a way always prepare the backups of it always be having the backups of it so that if something goes wrong in server a you just have to change the pointer to server b so that the data does not get lost so that the customers don't get impacted by any of the uh, ongoing issues so that is about the item all these aspects obviously n number of other aspects are also there in the item framework but yeah these are some of the basics that is it lets you enhance the understanding of the technical aspect not only from a customer end point from a technical end point but also from the customer satisfaction end point because if you are following all these backups of it or maybe the capacity or the demand or let's say how the tickets will get handled and on the customer satisfaction will be more because in future then the customers will be getting less issue out of your tool so then in that case the customer satisfaction will be more the financial saving will be there because the cost involved will be less so i can say all these interrelated gives you n number of advantages to the customer as well as to you the developer who ever is designing the tool are we good till here anyone any query okay i'll take it as a no so let's see the next one the next one talks about the benefit of it so just now i told you that what are the benefits will be there customer satisfaction will be more then rework will get reduced because of which what will happen because of which the financial saving will be there then it will improve the service availability because as i told the servers are available one server is replica of another so because of this the service availability will increase and it will improve what it will improve time to the market time taken to to go to the market will be less because you are prepared before and only with all the issues you are working on those issues before and so that's why the time taken to the market will be less next is what it improves the decision making and optimizes the risk because of all these benefits of idle the idle framework is in demand and because service law is based on idle framework so obviously i can say that all these benefits will also get get passed on to the service now too so these are the some of the benefit aspect of the tool now let's see some features of service now so what are the features are there in service now let's try to elaborate that so first thing first over here is that it says service now is very simple and consistent to you so if you know what all application you have to use you will see the consistency of the tool as you will know, see how simple it is for example let's say for example i'll show you one thing let's say i want to create something called incident what is incident and all we'll elaborate it later but for now to know if i'm looking for whatever once you type the data whatever command you're looking for service or returns to the specific records over here so it becomes easy for you to use the tool no need for you to know the tool very you know very well even if as a customer if you just know the uh, application which you're looking for once you type in the name over here the system returns you the data accordingly and you can proceed ahead and you can do the work over here what is next next it says that it is very flexible so flexibility of it and easy to integrate will make sense when we'll be covering integration of service now with any other tool 
So for not, let's skip these two functionality. What is next? It is very secure. How security is maintained? It is maintained because always you will see that the service now uses what protocol? It is uses HTTPS protocol, which is a secure protocol. So that's why um, service now is always working on a secure protocol. So obviously the data security is always maintained. And already you know that service now is based on ITIL framework. So that's why obviously speed time to production will be there. Okay, so these are the features of service now. Now, I'll stop today's class over here and let me first show it to you. How will you guys get instance like this for your personal users? And let's say today you have to practice any assignment or whatsoever it is, you need to have your own service now instance. So service now says for the trainers or, or for the you know users to learn service in a better way, service now has provided individual instances free of course. How can you get your own individual instance? You're not going to share it with anyone. So for getting it, go to, there is a website called developer.service-now.com. Go to this website. Once you go over there, it will ask you to register yourself. Register yourself. And after that, there will be a link coming on the right hand side called request your own instance. So once you request your own instance, you will get a URL link like this. And you can use it for your development activity or whatsoever. The only restriction is that it can't be used for the commercial purpose. It is only for the training activities and stuff. And also one more thing to note over here is that this instance will be active only when you keep on logging actively. If you don't log in in a day, it will go in a sleep mode and yes, you can wake it up. But if you don't log in continuously for 10 days, service now will be taken back from you. This URL will be taken back from you. Then obviously again, you can go and request for it. It is not like you can't request, but temporarily it is taken back from you. So guys, are we good till here? Yes. Okay. So I'll stop today's class over here. Tomorrow I'll start with the applications of service now and the architecture of the tool. Uh, Asad, so I have just one question. question. Yeah, please. Yeah, uh, regarding the training itself, uh, so uh, what uh, kind of training are we looking here? Or only for uh, administration part or you'll be uh, uh, taking us through even like what kind of integrations can be done with ServiceNow through web services? ServiceNow service is based on two protocols. It uses two. One is your SOAP and one is your REST. And those yeah. LDAPs and SOAPs are supported by ServiceNow. So yes, as part of this training, I will be walking you through admin stuff first. Obviously, that is my structure that first we'll be going to admin to understand the tool in a better way. Also, from an end user, we need to understand the terms of the tools. And then slowly, we'll be going towards the development part of it. Because as I told, uh, the database and stuff are not in your scope. So over here, at any point in time, you don't write the SQL command. So what you as a developer do is you design uh, service as its own, own scripting uh, language. You need to understand that from a training perspective. So yeah, we will also be considering that we'll also be covering those training aspects. And then so we will also be moving towards integration. So the duration of this training is going to be 30 days. One hour per day. Right now it was a demo, so I am ending it early. But otherwise, the demo will be for 30 days, and every day will one one hour every day. We'll be giving you a sign so that you can brush up your skills. Stuff like that. Okay, thanks. Okay, so far so good. What are the prerequisites for the development? So can you please repeat what all what? What are the prerequisites for the development for the service now? So what what basics uh, it need like Java? Do you need to have a Java background or UI background? Have, I'll say if you have a technical background, yes, it is a plus mark to you. But as I told uh, just now that service now has got its own scripting language. So even if you don't know, yeah, you will have to pay more attention to it. You'll have to brush it up more because in comparison to others, you don't know the stuff, the baseline of it. But I will say, even if you are not from the technical background, I have worked with students who were not from technical background, and now they are able to, you know, write the service now scripting and stuff. So I would not say as such prerequisite, but yeah, if you know Java or if you know JavaScript HTML, obviously it is an add-on to your profile. Obviously, it is it will become easy for you to understand service now. Okay. 
Yeah, it is my doubt too. So do we need to learn any JavaScript language before that? Is it helpful for us? Not exactly. As I told, not exactly. And when and where I feel that, you know, you, you need to learn the basics of, let's say, HTML and stuff. So I will be working through. I will be giving you assignments that, okay, you go through this, you do this. But as such of Java and JavaScript, you don't require it. But if you know Java, you will be able to relate the things that, okay, service for scripting is overall based on the Java JavaScript technology. But explicitly, oh, yes. you are never writing any service. Okay, thank you. Anyone else anything? Okay then guys, we'll catch up tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.